it's funny some of these dark storylines come up uh, when I'm sleeping or when I'm about to fall asleep. I found uh, some of the most uh, creative and productive times for me is when my head's on the pillow and I'm about to drop off. For some reason, a lot of stuff comes through to me at that point. And, uh, many's the time I have to pull myself up, turn on the light. I always sleep with a laptop right on the floor next to my bed and grab it and, and write down these things that I'm thinking so I don't forget in the morning. Um, I found, unfortunately, I mean, I still read a lot of crime fiction, but nothing like I was such a voracious reader of crime fiction as I was learning to do this and, and hoping to do this. Um, and now it can be very intrusive, so I like to read um, more nonfiction uh, than, than, than crime fiction, probably. Well, if you read um, The Drop, you'll find this is part of the this discussion of how long Harry Bosch can realistically carry a badge and a gun to chase killers around Los Angeles. And by the end of the book, we have an idea of how long Harry has, and, uh, and I'm happy with that. It gives me kind of a set time period from which I can explore Harry with the badge. It doesn't mean that's the end of Harry Bosch. I doubt that would be the end at all. Um, and, you know, what's great about writing is it's like time travel. You can go back. I can write about Harry in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. So there's still a lot to be said about Harry Bosch. A lot of holes in the story I hope to uh, fill in. Uh, before my time as a writer is over. Um, I like coming to Ireland a lot. This is, I think, my fifth time here. And uh, um, always well welcomed here, probably because of my name. Uh, I am of Irish descent. Um, as far as setting a novel here, a couple of novels ago, I took Harry Bosch on a road trip to Hong Kong. And, uh, put about two-thirds of a book in Hong Kong. So uh, that tells me I should lay off taking Harry on the road for a while. Um, I think people, we've had a discussion here about character and the connection to the place and so forth. And Harry is, I think, built to be synonymous with Los Angeles, so i got to be very careful about taking him out. And so it'll be a, I think it'll be a while before I do a fish-out-of-water story and could possibly bring Harry uh, to Ireland. I can't say I watch a lot of um, TV. Um, I do like a show called Breaking Bad. I don't know if that's on over here, but um, it's a very dark uh, series, and I like it a lot. Um, but for the most part, it's a curse, and it's also the best thing about writing is that you can write almost any time, almost anywhere. And so when people are settling down after dinner and, and uh, you know, watching a TV show, well, most often I'll be settling down with my laptop to write a few more paragraphs or a few more pages. And so it keeps me away from a lot of TV. <laughs> I think any kind of community where you can discuss things, discuss books, is, is you know, obviously a positive thing. And one of the great things about the advent of the internet is, is this kind of community, and I know I've benefited from, from it. You know, I have a website, a Facebook page that, that people can talk about my work, and if you take that further to general discussions of books, it's, it's, you know, what's not to like about that? Um, I don't know if it's that interesting, to tell you the truth, but I, I only write by... Uh, controlled light, you know, uh, I have blackout shades in my office, and I like to have one lamp on next to me on the right side, I work on a laptop, I don't sit at a desk, um, and I like to have, this is getting to the quirk, the quirk is I don't like to know what time of day it is when I'm writing, I don't want to know whether it's light out or dark out, I just want to escape into the writing and, and not worry about time. I don't do this anymore because it was pretty weird, but I used to even put a band-aid over the top corner of my laptop where it has the clock so I wouldn't be able to tell what time it is. I'm not that weird anymore. I just don't look up the clock. Um, my 
father built houses, and I wanted to build houses like him. And my grandfather built houses before him, and so it was kind of like a family line. Um, and since a very early age, I would go with my dad to work, and he'd give me little phony jobs, cleaning up nails or planting little flowers here and there around the houses he built. And I just thought that was my destination. And then uh, instead, something happened to me through my reading where I, it just struck me that I should build stories instead of houses. Um, I think my family's pretty proud of me. Um, yeah, they're all readers and, and um, they read my books. Um, the problem is with family, they always have to tell you your books are fantastic. And uh, you don't get a an unvarnished response. I have a 14 year old daughter who's always been a really good reader and I've kind of held her away from reading my books because uh, they're so dark in many ways. But she's now um, starting to read them and it kind of has me on pins and needles when I see her reading one of my books because I don't want to disappoint her. Well, it's, in my books, my characters come in and out of a lot of the different stories. And, uh, I, unless a character is dead, I have a feeling they will come back, you know. Um, and so, uh, and there's one character I wrote in a book called Boy Moon named Cassie Black. And she's only come back in a little cameo. And I really want to come up with an idea for bringing her back in a big way. It just hasn't come to me yet. Yeah, there's, there's multiple books, many, many uh, authors and books have um, influenced me. Uh, the big three influences on me were uh, Raymond Chandler, Ross McDonald, and Joseph Wambaugh, all wrote about Los Angeles area, and um, they were probably the most influential uh, writers on me, and they all wrote multiple books. Um, there's been a lot of each, so it's, it would be hard to pick uh, the toughest, but w one thing I find of interest is there's a uh, book critic at the New York Times who has given me both the worst review of my life and the best review of my life, you know, for different books. So it's kind of interesting that it came from the same critic, but um, unfortunately the bad review came first, so when I got that bad review, I was just, I was crushed. Uh, you can... Writers can say a lot about how reviews don't matter and all that stuff, but I think we all take stuff to heart. And uh, the New York Times is a big stage. I, they often did review me, and then the first time I got a full review was a little instruction of my book, uh, A Darkness More Than Night, which I really still count as one of my favorite novels because I feel it was it really fulfilled the goal that I had for that book. And then to have it destroyed in the New York Times was very tough. But then, like, a couple years later, um, now I forget the book. I think it was called The Narrows. Um, the same critic came back with um, just a, a rave review of it. Um, so that kind of made up for things, I guess. I don't know if this will be classified as horror. It sort of was when it came out. But Thomas Harris's book, Red Dragon, which was the precursor to the Silence of the Land, really had a lot of you know, contemporary or real horror in it. So I'm going to classify that as horror for this discussion. And I'll say that that is a book I've read several times. It's a book that never stops entertaining, but it also never stops teaching me as a writer about uh, momentum, and the importance of detail, and, and, and the importance of character. Um, to a small extent, the <coughs> phobia I had as a kid has played pretty significantly in my books. When I was a kid, I was afraid of uh, tight spaces, particularly tunnels. And I lived in this neighborhood where there was a drainage tunnel. It wasn't very big. It's probably like this big. But by the time you were about 10 or 12, you had to crawl through that or you were a sissy, you know, the kids would uh, jump on you if you didn't, and as the time came that I had to do that, I remember having nightmares and all this stuff about tunnels, and eventually I went through and, and that was that, 
but the whole Harry Bosch series to me is kind of built as a tunnel and Harry was a tunnel rat in the Vietnam War. There's a lot of thematic um, and imagery in all the books regarding tunnels and I'm pretty sure it comes out of um, that childhood phobia.